and welcome to Golly River Pottery. I am going to be making uh, this ripple mug for you guys today. I'm going to be making it in red stoneware. So I'm also going to show you a quick trick on how to get a nice smooth rim. So this is a pound and three quarters. This can also be made with a pound and a half. You know, it really just depends on the size. I'm going for pretty large ones. I don't know, in my head, bigger is always better. Which, you know, I'm getting a lot of requests for small mugs lately, so I try to keep those in stock. Um, but this one's probably going to be pretty tall and narrow. So I'm going to start with uh, the centering tool again. So I'm pressing down on the center and let the tool do its work. And if you notice with the centering tool, it keeps my wrist nice and straight. Um, potters, a lot of times, through years and years and years of potting will end up with uh, wrist problems and this tool really helps eliminate a lot of those problems. Production tool. Alright, so that's nicely centered. And now we're going to open. And if you notice, I like to use my fist. I try to use my body weight as much as possible so I'm at the bottom. I also have my thumb under my fist and that helps me gauge the depth. On really big bowls, you know, I really burrow down in there and lay on it. I'll be doing a big bowl eventually for you. So compressing back to the center is very important. Try to keep those little clay particles as tightly packed as possible. So, claw in. Another thing with red clay, you see I just knocked this little piece off center, is since it has all this grit in it, it it's easy for you to hit a little piece of grit and it kind of throws the piece off center. So you're constantly having to recenter the red clay. Um, any any gritty clay you have that issue with. Um, I recommend starting with a smooth clay body, like a, a smooth stoneware. They've got 181 with standard, number 65 with um, with uh, Laguna, which is Miller clay. So either one of those. Um, very smooth clays, easy to work with. This is a little trickier, but I definitely believe any potter that's uh, starting out or been doing it for a while, experiment with different clays. Um, different clay bodies all have different benefits and drawbacks for each one. So I like this one because it gives us our golly brown clay, our glaze color, where we take our golly green color and we put it on this red clay body and it gives us this lovely shade of deep, dark, rich browns and blues. It's a very earthy color. This is pull number two. I think I was chattering away. Kind of lost count. So I'm going to go ahead and do another pull just to be on the safe side because I've got extra clay down there in the bottom. I can see that. So there's definitely some more to be moved. And if you notice that I add, I take the old water away and add new water on each pull. And, you know, like I said before, many times it's very important to keep the clay as dry as possible when you're throwing. This nice straight side here. This is one of my favorite mugs. I, I made the first one way back in college at Marshall University. I don't think my professor liked it very much, but... I, it's a it's a pretty popular mug for me. It has finger ridges. It seems like it's more of a masculine mug. So um, add a little bit of water, and I'm gonna push out with my middle finger, and uh, this these fingers are on either side of that, and I'm just gonna go right up the side of the mug and make these nice finger ridges. So with this mug, you can hold it around the mug. Or you can hold it by the handle. I think that's why it's so popular. It's very versatile. Um, I even make this shape as just a tumbler, which is a mug without a handle. 
wear the rim out just a touch. So it's got pretty straight sides and then some nice ripples up the sides. And it's just fun. Another fun mug. So you gotta get this water out of the bottom. And up the sides, get rid of any sharp edges. And I kind of touch these a little on the outside. That rim nice. Use the same trick that I used before. So here's a little paintbrush. Still got a little slip on it from the last piece. So grab up some slip and paint that right there on the rim. There was a lot here, but I have just found for the most part, I err on the side of it needing extra slip. So I always add extra slip. This was a game changer for me with, these, with this red clay finding this technique of adding this fine particle slip back to the rim. So, my handy dandy little piece of plastic. And I'm gonna slow my wheel down just a little bit. And wrap it around. Just so gently, trying to keep the the slip on the rim because it kind of wants to come off on the plastic so keep as much of it on there as possible but you know it makes a nice nice smooth rim uh, try to get a little ah there we go nice it had a little dry spot so i added it back but as you can see it really helps a ton Makes this beautiful smooth rim that's nice for the lips and glaze adhesion. So, just another little thing you can give a shot at or just watch me do. And, oh, here's the wire tool. Again, it's not wire. It's like 10 pounds, 10 pound fishing line. So, I'm going to cut this baby off of here. Woo! She decided to take a ride. <laughs> I usually like to scrape the extra clay off of my bat at that point, too. So, there it is. So, uh, thank you for watching, and join me again here at Golly River Pottery to see what we're making next time. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.